What's up guys and welcome to Xbox On. 2017 has been a great year for gaming on Xbox, so it got us thinking about all our personal favorites over the year. So here's Lydia to kick off the best games of 2017. Yeah, so this is pretty much the only game on this list to give me PTSD. I still have horrid flashbacks to the dinner table scene, and whenever I tell my brain not to think about rotting animal guts, I just think about them more. Worst Christmas dinner ever. They haven't even laid out any Christmas crackers. Don't get me wrong, I'm glad Resi 7 mentally scarred me, because that's what effective horror games do. The change from third to first person definitely helped with that, putting you disturbingly close to the action. Just walking through a door and not knowing what was about to jump into your face was fraught with tension. You don't have an arsenal of weaponry to help you, at least not at first. You're forced to hide as monsters prowl around, or else die a painful death. Soon though, you start amassing gear and you can get your own back. Take that lighting fixture! Burn, stuffed crocodile! This is for creeping me the heck out interior design! This lets you hold your own and gives the game a nice arc. You grow from trembling trespasser to tooled up terrorizer. Hey, it's Resi! There's got to be a flamethrower in there somewhere! My favourite bit is the dedicated disgust button. Pressing LB lets you react strongly to things. Dirty sink? Horror. Stinky socks? Horror. Grandma? Absolute horror. For co-op thrills in 2017, you can't beat the four-man military antics in Ghost Recon Wildlands. Across a beautiful open-world Bolivia, you have to take down vicious coke barons and disrupt their countrywide drug operation. It's a game giving new meaning to the term Crack Squad. Now, clearing outposts is a tried and tested video game feature, but Wildlands makes the process of taking down bad guys in their bases fresh and exciting. First of all, sink shots feel absolutely badass. You can mark up to three targets, then press a button and have your guys take them out simultaneously. Playing in co-op, you have to coordinate these moves yourself, which is even more thrilling. And when things go loud, you can call in help from locals that you've won over, and they'll lend assistance with mortar fire, and you can also summon them as backup. But it's the 360 degree combat that makes Wildland so tasty. You can approach a fight from anywhere, skydive from a chopper, storm in on bikes or wait until dark and engage night vision and snipe them from a mountain. Wildlands lets you devise your own winning strategy, or not as the case may be, and it does so in a fabulously freeing environment. Okay, roll that sync shot one more time. Awesome. I've got the mania, the sonic mania. I'm crazy for this retro side scroller. My symptoms are nostalgic glee and very wobbly bones. Actually, I think I had wobbly bones before, but the bottom line is I definitely have the sonic mania. Why is Sonic Mania so cool? It takes you back to when Sonic meant something different. A time when graphics were pixels and sounds went bloop bloop. In my view, switching the action back to 2D focuses things without losing that trademark speed and excitement. The worlds are just so imaginative. There are new worlds, like a TV studio full of giant TVs and popcorn machines, and great remixes of old favourites. Chemical Plant Zone, for example, gets a facelift from its Sonic 2 appearance, letting you mix materials to make new platforms and ending with a boss fight set inside Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. Even Green Hill Zone, the most classic Sonic stage of all, has something new to say when filtered through Mania's imagination. This game is just a huge celebration of everything that made Sonic great and evidence that he still has plenty new to say. An absolute triumph. Now, everyone that knows me knows that I love Call of Duty. First of all, I love the decision this year to head back to World War II, as it's a setting with tons to explore. The campaign follows a group of American soldiers as they land at D-Day, push through mainland Europe, fight through the trenches and cities and freezing cold German forests, and finally take Berlin. Spoiler alert, the American soldiers win. Now, we've all probably heard the story before, but to be honest, it deserves to be retold. Call of Duty World War II not only gives me a stronger appreciation for the brave men and women who actually did this stuff in real life, but getting to experience it firsthand made their experiences that much more real. That goes for the freedom fighters in Paris, to the tank drivers on the streets, and the plane pilots in the sky, but it also helps that the game's incredibly fun. 
and the multiplayer brings that expected Call of Duty quality. It removes all those ridiculous jetpacks and wall running for proper brawls in the mud and introduces new modes like the narrative driven war mode. The multiplayer lobby even becomes a location that you can explore, complete with a pit where you can test your one on one fighting abilities. And finally there's the new look zombies mode. Some say it's the scariest zombies has been in years but not me because I have nerves of steel. It rounds out a huge package of war flavoured thrills. We go under the sea for another of 2017's must plays. It's a stealthy puzzle platformer in which you play as Six, a young girl in a rain mac who navigates a horrendous resort. This place is called The Moor and it's one of the most atmospheric video game locations I've ever explored. The Moor is basically like if Tim Burton made a Butlins or if a cruise liner was taken over by a team of demented Muppets. Horribly disfigured staff roam its groaning halls. Their unique hideous but they all have one thing in common they'll kill you on sight that's very poor customer service in my opinion one star on TripAdvisor for you there are so many ways to die in little nightmares that it actually gives me big nightmares if this fat chef finds you he'll grab you and take you over to his chopping board ouch unless he's near the oven where he'll stuff you in it rain mac and all and these bloaters want to grab you and cram you into their hungry mouths clearly never taught to finish what's on their plate before asking for seconds you've got a massive pile of meat like right there She's got a rain mac. This isn't a big mac. You not only have to tiptoe around the resort's cooks, caretakers and staff, making sure to keep to the carpets and not tread over any creaking floorboards, but you have to do all of this while battling hunger pains. Sometimes you get so hungry you have to eat a live rat. Well, we've all been there, haven't we? Little Nightmares was actually called Hunger originally. The name it ended up with sums it up well, Little Nightmares being a sort of grim fairy tale, but I prefer to call it the fantastic underwater adventures of Hungry Rain Mac Girl. Give this twisted gem a go yourself. With loot boxes dominating the headlines this year, in my opinion, FIFA 18 is an example of a game that gets the idea right. Ultimate Team continues to be an obsession of mine and FIFA 18 gave us new ways to build fancy squads without handing over real money. There are so many ways to earn coins, squad battles, weekend leagues, squad building challenges, daily and weekly challenges and head to heads against humans or the computer. It's a time investment, sure, but under control I can quit any time I want. Honest. If you wanted to pay for player packs, more power to you, but you definitely didn't have to. There are always options depending on how much time you're willing to sink. Not to brag, but by the end of the first week, I already had a team containing Sane, Lalana, and Sterling, which meant I could save my actual money to buy strawberry laces and gummy bears from the sweet shop. It was a smart move. If the journey is more your thing, FIFA 18's branching story mode was even better than last year. You got to really develop Alex Hunter as a world class footballer, picking the teams you wanted to transfer to, the playing partners you wanted your manager to bring in and even the tattoos you want on your neck. Combine that mode with stunning visuals that look scarily lifelike in 4K on the Xbox One X and you have a FIFA game at the peak of its powers. Next up is South Park The Fractured Butthole, a game that combines my love of superheroes and swearing. What can I say? I'm very cultural. Here the South Park boys and girls split into two rival superhero factions, each vying to create their own superhero media franchises. During the Brand War, they stumble upon a grand conspiracy for all of the town's crime gangs under a new kingpin, so the children must band together to stop them. If they can resist punching preschoolers, that is. As the new kid, you've got to create a superhero from the ground up, using powers that would never pass a Marvel boardroom meeting. My speedster often summons Moses to unleash laser beams from space and calls in two Vietnam vets to spray everyone with machine gun fire. You can even get plastic surgery. Here's me trading a fidget spinner for jowls. How the game switches combat to a 3D grid gave you more strategic options and makes placement matter. But South Park is good because it felt like South Park. I fought tramps on basketball courts, visited the community centre and found something unmentionable in the bathroom, and chatted with Morgan Freeman. And that's what I want from a South Park game. Sharp, pop culture satire mixed with ultra dumb stuff. 
This is the most recent addition to the list, but one that has already made a huge impact on our gaming lives. It's an open world multiplayer deathmatch where 100 people are dropped onto an island and left to kill each other with whatever they can grab from the world around them. If you're lucky, that means a powerful sniper rifle with a suppressor and a ghillie suit to keep you hidden. If you're unlucky, you're running around in your pants with a frying pan. PUBG is the breakout success story of 2017, dominating the PC scene and now appearing exclusively on console on the Xbox One. This isn't a finished game, but an early access title. Just like on PC, you pay to join a work in progress, watching the game add new features over time as the community develops new tactics to make the most of them. We've watched our PC colleagues in the office play this every single lunchtime for the last six months, so it's great to finally have something to distract us from our sandwiches. It's one of those games where no two matches are ever the same and you're always guaranteed to come away with an amazing story or two. Like that time 20 people airdropped onto the same school and had a bloody brawl in the corridors. Or the time our producer Matt managed to win the whole game by lying in a field and waiting for everyone else to kill each other. If you're wondering, yes, he did pay me to include that story. Yeah. But there's no doubt about it, PUBG is one of the biggest games in the world right now, and on Xbox One, it's only going to get bigger. So why not come join in on the fun? If you played the original, Destiny 2 gives you everything you wanted and more. And if you hadn't, it's the perfect jumping on point. The premise is a very bad dude from a distant planet invades future Earth and steals your weapons, your armor, and your magic powers. This sets everyone on equal footing, whether you had a thousand hours in Destiny or none at all. And that's perfect in a game like this, where working and playing as a team is so key to all the fun. What followed is an epic quest across the solar system to reclaim your powers and vanquish Ghoul from Earth. He's just so rude, like, at least take your shoes off before you come in. Of course, it's only a matter of time before you start trying to hoard all the loot you can, like some mad gun-toting magpie. Everything that you do pays off with awesomely designed armor, uniquely powered weapons, colorful paint jobs, personal vehicles, and more. It provides a hook you needed to spend dozens upon dozens of hours in the game, completing public events against the AI, going on multi-hour raids, blasting through the cinematic campaign, fulfilling daily challenges, or facing fellow players in the Crucible. Also, a special shout out to the recent update that saw the game leak to native 4K on the Xbox One X. Though this is an amazing looking game, no matter what you play it on, personally, I've logged a silly amount of hours on this, and because of that, Destiny 2 earns its place on this list. One of my greatest gaming achievements this year was finishing Cuphead without tearing my hair out. It may look all cute and friendly, but this platformer come boss rush is as hard as concrete crockery. I've played it with friends in co-op and I've played it during soul searching night sessions where I started to have real doubts about my gaming skills. One thing is consistent. Cuphead is harsh but fair. It starts off relatively easy. I was able to beat the root pack on my first go. Eat your vegetables? More like beat your vegetables. Take that carrot top. Then it was Beppy the clown's turn and Cuphead began affirming itself as a certified brute. Little by little though, I began working out his patterns, like how high you need to jump over Beppy's spiky coaster carriages and the proper angle to shoot his balloons. It's simple really, the more you play, the better you get. Nowhere is that more evident than in Cuphead. You start each boss fight as a hopeless beginner and end them as an attack dodging deity. Each stage is like learning a language in 30 minutes, albeit a language made up of flips, dodges and firing bullets from your fingers. Some bosses do require a bit of luck. I inched by Ribby and Croaks because I got fortunate on the random attack they happened to spit out of their living slot machine. But that element makes Cuphead wonderfully unpredictable and an all around great game. When you think of Forza 7, you think of just one thing. Cars with weird pictures painted on them. I'm talking Jaguars with a picture of a Catwoman on the side. I'm talking a Ram truck with a whole gang of freaking Darth Vaders on it. If it doesn't upset the company lawyers too much, I'm even talking about a Mini covered in Mario. 
Wait a second, I got my notes modeled up. These designs are great, but they aren't what I think of when I think of Forza 7. No, Turn 10's latest and greatest is actually the game that introduced me to the wonders of native 4K gaming at 60 frames per second. Honestly, it's a revelation, and Forza 7 alone convinced me the power of the Xbox One X. Just look at Dubai, like I want to live inside of it. That skybox is pushing HDR technology to the max. The draw distances extend all the way to the horizon without a hint of pop-up, and the cars themselves don't have a jagged edge on them. Use the post-race replay feature to look even closer, and you can even see your own reflection. But more than that, Forza 7 is a stupidly good driving game. The handling feels as authentic as you want it to. With a heaving track list featuring official courses and fictional routes, over 700 faithfully recreated vehicles, from tiny Hobbit cars to hulking transit vans, and the most bizarre driver outfits that I've ever seen, like a policeman or a doctor, Forza 7 is definitely one of this year's frontrunners. And if that didn't convince you, here's a Harry Boat car. I rest my case. Show me another game this year that lets you inhabit the body of an eagle, climb the pyramids of Egypt, turn your beard off and on at will, and summon a crocodile to savage your enemies. This is for snappy, you murderers. That's why Assassin's Creed Origins is on this list. Ubisoft goes back into the ancient past and comes up with a game as modern as anything I've played. For a developer famed with creating deep open worlds, this is among the largest and most detailed of the lot. You can go from riding a camel through the serene desert in one moment, losing your mind at the occasional mirage of a man conjuring a snake from thin air to exploring the depths of an ancient ruin with only cobwebs and torchlight for company. Then there are bustling urban hubs where guards patrol on horseback and merchants ferry shipments up and down a packed Nile. Egypt is just so diverse. Before I played it, I had fears Origins would just be all sand in one-story mud huts, hardly ripe for parkour fun. I'm happy to say I'm wrong and I'm a big idiot. Origins breaks the series yearly release schedule and returns revitalized, with plenty to see and do. I love racing chariots in the Hippodrome, smashing boats into people, plundering sunken treasure, and taking screenshots in a constantly varied Egyptian playground. Oh, and diving into hay bales in falls that would kill a normal man. Some things never change. Ah, I'm still alive. Now you must die. So there we have it, just some of our favorite games of 2017, but we'd love to hear from you down in the comments below what your favorite is. Also, if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, drop a thumbs up on the video. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.